Welcome to Aspects of Writing. I'm your host, James Kelly, and my co-host is Janet Corsi. Our guests for today's show are Sandy Sierra and Vicki Ann Bush. The topic of today's show is the reality of self-publishing. But before we get to my guests, my panel and I would like to read a few fun quips and quotes. And Janet, I'm going to let you start. Oh, wonderful. At heart, self-publishing is kind of like a bake sale. The end product does not need to resemble that one that comes from the commercial bakery. But it must taste good. No one wants the lumpy, underbaked oatmeal cookie with spinach and alfalfa-flavored chips. No. And that's by C.D. Williams. All right. And Vicki Ann? I went to a bookstore and asked the saleswoman, where's the self-help section? She said if she told me, it would defeat the purpose. <laughs> <laughs> that was by George Carlin, yeah, one of my faves. Like yes. <laughs> yeah. Sandra? Authors today need a publisher as much as they need a tapeworm. That's by our hall. So Uh, true. Yes. And mine is, as a kid, one day in class, I was daydreaming and not paying attention to the lesson. My teacher looked at me and said, name two pronouns. I looked around to see who she was talking about and said, who, me? And that's by Anonymous. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) All right. Love it. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Aspects of Writing. My guests for today's show are Sandra Sierra and Vicki Ann Bush. And the topic is the reality of self-publishing. And, Jan, I'm going to let you start off. Well, Sandra Sierra is an old friend of mine, I'm happy to say, although we don't get to see each other and probably haven't seen each other in, what, 10 years? But Oh, yeah, it's been that long? It's been that long, easy. But Sandra Sierra is the author of Molly Blue and the Quell of Two Lives and Molly Blue, the Thirteen Wands. Sandy, tell us about yourself and your life and, and what you're doing and why you became a writer. Wow, why why did you get a writer was because of you, Jan, actually. Oh. I mean, I used to, yeah, well, the last time I seen you, and I'm thinking, was it 10 years ago? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I don't know, maybe seven or eight. Yeah. But anyways, long. I remember you saying you were writing, and you told me that I should write instead of reading because I do read a lot and at the time you said that you had started writing and taking up all the time at work instead of bringing a book and I was like wow that's cool I do have spent a lot of time reading so I picked up a pen and a notebook and I just started writing why why children's stories why why did you decide a children's story um because I my kids okay. I used to tell them stories when they were kids when, oh okay and I had all these characters that they used to love with dragons and I used to use their names as the prince and the princess and their cousins names in the book in the um, stories as well and we they they loved them and so when she told me you should start writing i said well i guess i'll give it a try pick up almost almost the same subject as i used to tell my kids but a little different and it's yes a whole different story but it's set in the magical realm so you made up the stories that you would tell your children uh-huh yeah oh wow It'd okay be like go to sleep here here i'll tell you a story yeah and yeah so like I said, I set this in the med- magical realm, the same place that I used to set the stories when they were kids. Okay. And, and I just wrote and wrote and... Well, how many... But, now, you've written two now. So in between them, you wrote the one. How long was it before you wrote the second one? Um, as soon as... Well, I, I knew I, it was going to be a continuation. Okay. So as soon as I finished, finished the second one, I was already had all the what was going to happen next Okay. and started. So I started writing the, the second one okay. and well, after editing and learning how to use a computer and everything, which I didn't have or, or anything because um, I just wrote it all by hand. And she just ah. put two kids through college. So all the monies was going that mm. way. Wow. Well, and you know, it's interesting though, because a lot of the authors we've talked to, even even though they have the equipment, they'll actually, and I do that sometimes too, I'll write by free, actually all my stories, I always write them by freehand, then go back and mm-hmm. put them in the computer. I may work yeah. on them in the computer, mm-hmm. but I actually mm-hmm. write them out by freehand. 
the whole the whole story. Yeah, M- not the whole story because it, let's just say like what what Sandra's talking about. Like if I get up in the morning and I write something down so I don't forget it. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. have my outline. Then I go back to the computer and I'll write it in. Yeah, and then yeah. I, then I elaborate from there. But, okay, but yeah. sometimes I still will. I get so confused. I'll sit down and I'll write freehand, then go back to the computer again. Oh, yeah, I do that a lot. Like right. when I'm out and about, I'm staying out to lunch or out to dinner or something, and I always keep a notebook and pen in my yep. purse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just know all of a sudden something pops in your hand, and you just write it out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you might not use it because it, was, it might sound good at that point, but you right. know, you start writing yeah, right. it, and then you're like, ah, oh, that kind of sounds. Sounds dumb now. Right, when you get ready to put it in the computer. But yeah, yeah. But that's that's perfectly great. That's kind of what I do as well. Mm-hmm. Now, you just got a website going, so you would have some place to put your work. And that's yeah. good, because I was going to suggest to you, because you're a new author, and I was mm-hmm. going to suggest to you, you should always have some place to put your work. So at least you went out and did that. And Jan, I'm going to let you read that address, because it's kind of long. So. Yes, and uh, everybody just write this down. It's Sierra Sandra Me at Wixsite.com backslash uh, website. And it's S-I-E-R-R-A-S-A-N-D-R-A. M E period W I X S I T E period C O M forward slash forward slash mm-hmm. uh, website. Okay. Now, also, your book is available on um, Amazon.com, but you write under the name S M Sierra. Yes. So if they go to Amazon, they need to look under S M Sierra. And then uh-huh. the title of the books, which are Molly Blue and the Quill of Two Lives and Molly Blue and the Thirteen Wands. Can, can I tell a little story about the Thirteen Wands? Sure. Sandra was telling me a couple of weeks ago when we were talking that uh, these people, this is magic that she's talking about. And these people have to come up with uh, different, um, what are they called? Uh, potions. Not uh, potions. Uh, spells. Spells. Yeah, spells. Uh, <laughs> Oh, my God, I need a potion. Uh, and she was telling me how in, in the book she would say, oh, well, I, I need a, a spell for this thing that's happening. And, and she said to me, then I found I had to look back because some of my spells were just like another spell I already had. So I had to work on that some more. And, and she had to write uh-huh. all of her spells down separately so that she wouldn't do the yeah. same spell twice. It's, that's <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's just the right, like writing a novel. You it know? it yeah. really yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah. And you write children's stories as well. I started with children's stories. I moved into young adult, but I started with children's. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, Senator, I'm going to introduce Vicki, and then after I introduce Vicki, we're going to get into a panel discussion. So our next guest is Vicki Ann Bush. Vicki Ann is the author of 13 books. Vicki Ann writes in several different genres. Uh, She originally started out in a small publishing house in Wisconsin called Salt of the Earth Press and was the first to offer a, a contract for her children's books, Winslow Willow, the Woodland Fairy. The Woodland Fairy. And later on for The Queen of It. Yes. Okay. After release, after releasing the novelette series, The Dust Chronicles, and a trilogy that is available individually as ebooks and in paperback, she moved into young adult fiction. Vicki Ann is currently contracted with Solstice Publishing. Other works include the young adult historical romance, The Garden of Two, the paranormal romance novella series, The Fulfillment, the Paranormal Short, The Joshua Tree, and The Science Fiction Adventure, Room 629. Ooh. Vicki Ann, what can you tell us about yourself, your past, and why you became a writer? I'm originally from New York, and when I was 13, why are you laughing? Because of that accent. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> when I was 13, uh, school I was going to, there was a citywide contest to, uh, to write a book. And, but we had to not only write the book, we had to construct the book. Okay. So, you know, sew the binder, pick the cover, and do all that fun stuff. I fell in love with it. I fell in love with writing. So after that, I just kept writing. But it wasn't until my uh, daughters were much older, I had since gotten married and, and had the kids, mm-hmm. that they started pushing me to, do, to, to send my work in. And uh, it was around 2007 when I started to submit to publishers and 2008 when I got Salt of the Earth Press. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. All right, so where can we learn more about your books? Um, they're available at Amazon. They're also available at Barnes & Noble. And then my website, which is www.vickiannbush.com. 
Now, there's no hyphen in between the Vicky Ann? No, it's all in one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Again, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Aspects of Writing with me, your host, James Kelly, and my co-host is Janet Corsi. Our guests for today's show are Vicki Ann Bush and Sandra Sierra, and the topic of today's show is the reality of self-publishing. And boy, do we have a lot to talk about today. <laughs> Um, before we get into the panel discussion, I'd like to read a few fun facts that I found on the internet. And the first thing is, is that if I went to worldmetersinfo.com, and the first thing I discovered is new books published this year at the start of the show. It's an actual up-to-date thing. If you're sitting there watching it, it's constantly clicking. And as of the start of the show, there were 2,242,818 new books published this year. Wow. That equates to over 7,000 new books published per day worldwide. Oh. Worldwide, That's the worldwide. Um, wow. Yeah, that's amazing when you think about it. Uh, book publishing is a $130 billion a year business. Wow. Yeah, oh, boy. We all need to start a, our own. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. uh, regarding ebooks, Amazon averages 1,064,000 paid downloads per day. Okay, that's paid downloads per day. And of that, 448,000 are self-published per day. Wow, okay. marvelous. 244,000 are from the top five big publishers. So almost double are from self-publishers, okay? 204 are from small to medium sided site publishers. Uh -huh. So in other words, not the top five, but you know, the smaller to medium. And ebook standings from February 2014 to January 2016. Here's the ebook standings. Indie published are up 16%. The big five publishers are down 11%. The small to medium publishers are down 2%. And Amazon published ebooks are up about 5%. So you see a shifting in the market. You know, uh -huh. the traditional yeah. publishers are no longer in the lead there. The self published right. authors are kind of taken over. Of that, four of Amazon's top ten best-selling e-books were self-published. Four of the top ten e-books, okay? Ten of 20 were self-published. Fifty-six out of the hundred top-selling e-books were self-published. So more self-published e-books were top-selling over traditional, traditional publishers or small publishers. Twenty out of every hundred selling e-books were in the indie titles price between $2.99 and five ninety nine, and we're going to talk about that in a minute because that's shifted as well. Used to be a market to where if you gave your book away or you were at ninety nine cents or dollar ninety nine, you attracted more readers. But mm -hmm. it's changing now. For some reason, people are willing to spend a little more, and they think they're, they're getting a better book when they spend a little more. I think that's what it is. I think that they think they're getting a better book. I think they see the ninety nine cents, and kind of like a red flag goes up. Like yeah, unless so, it's a short story. Then, yeah. it, then it makes sense. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's interesting, though, to see how this, this market's constantly changing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to read this, and then we're going to talk about each, each one. First of all, write a book. Editing is the most important part of selling a book. And we've talked about this numerous times on the show. And it's really hard. We even talked about this before we went on the air today. It's really hard to know how to go about this publishing. And I'm going to tell a story, and then we're going to talk more about this, because I know, Vicki, and you have experience with this, Jen. You have experience with yep. this. When I first started publishing in 1995, when I, my first book came out, I had gone through six pub uh, editors for my first book. And you know what? I didn't know anything about what I was doing, and I didn't know how it was supposed to read. I didn't know anything. Yeah. So I spent a fortune with editors. I had one editor who had me pay him three times. Oh, no. Oh, because geez. I didn't know. He goes, well, you know, we went through this, but I really think you need to go back over this again and resubmit it. And each time he charged me the same fee. So I spent thousands. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Since then, with my other books, particularly the one I'm working on now, I've gone through – I actually went to someone to edit my book who was at a major university. Because I don't – as people who are authors, if we're not familiar with the industry, we really don't know who to turn to. And in the past, when I would read books on self-publishing, uh, they would actually say, you know, find a friend who's a teacher or find someone, you know, who, who's edited other books. But it doesn't always work out that well because that doesn't mean they understand – the technique behind editing or how a book should read. Right. They just know yeah. how to make exactly. proper syntax, you know, make sure exactly. the grammar is correct and the punctuation. But a book yeah. needs more than that nine times out of ten. 
So I'm going to ask you. All right, now I know with you, Sandra, you 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 edited your book. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And again, with the internet, which I had access to now, which probably you didn't back then, uh, right. there are a lot of articles, a lot of um, uh, educational little place, a lot of places that you could go to and 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 can tell you. Oh, this is you know groups and stuff that I've joined. One called the Right Practice, and and where you actually practice and you listen. There's articles they talk about um, self-publishing and, so, and Sandra, editing and, and everything. So that's how I learned. So now, Sandra, did you submit your book for a group reading or didn't? No, 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 no. Okay, no. All right. Now, Vicky Ann, how did you go about you? you how because you you're you're published. But still, you have yeah. to go through the editing process. Right. So right. what are the techniques you've had to go through? Um, I have a group of people that I hold close to me, you know, family and friends, that um, I'll send my work, you know, and there, it'll go in stages. My daughter is first stage always, my oldest daughter. Okay. But it, I'll send it out. A friend of mine uh, in New York used to be a copyright for um, Doubleday, so I'll oh. send it to her, second, second level, and so on and so forth. And then I do that, and then, of course, I'm editing after each one and, and looking at what's been done. And then it goes and gets submitted to my publisher. Well, once it gets submitted to my publisher, then, of course, if they accept it and offer me the contract, I'm working with another editor because on they that have their level. Own. Right, yeah. But, you know, like you said, too, James, the, it, you know, those editors are different, too. What one editor deems, you know, appropriate or, or you know, good context, you work with another editor and they're like, why, why did you do that? You know, mm -hmm. because I, I do it this way. So it constantly changes, even though you're working with professional editors as, what, as well. And that's the reality of this show. Uh, what we're talking about with the reality of self-publishing is that the reality is, is sometimes it's hard to know where to turn to. Because yeah. if, even mm -hmm. if someone has a site on the Internet and says they're an editor, how, how do you know, you know, what are their credentials? Yeah. Right. Oftentimes, yeah. to be honest with you, we're too lazy to go and find out everything we possibly can about an editor. And even mm -hmm. if an editor has a book that's out there and it's been published, how many books did they sell? I mean, right. there's a lot more to it than that. Um, one of the things that a lot of people are doing now, which I'm, I'm just giving this out to everyone here, including myself, and I'm going to be doing this as well with the next book that's coming out, is I'm going to be submitting my book to beta readers. And I'm going to be submitting that to uh, at least probably two diff 200 different people. And we had a, mm -hmm. a gentleman mm -hmm. on our last show who did right. that. You know, he sent his book out for people to read. And beta readers you can find on the Internet. You can go to sites. Just put in beta readers, and I'll give you all these different sites you can go to where people are willing to take your book and read it for free, for a free mm -hmm. copy. If you give them a free copy, like an ebook version or whatever, mm -hmm. they will read it, critique it, and send you back information that is useful. Okay, can I interrupt you for one second? Sure. So I want to tell you something new that's going on with beta readers. Okay. So make sure that that's somebody that you uh, at least have some kind of a contract with or some kind of a non-disclose with because there's a new thing going on with beta readers right now. And the only reason I know this is it's because it's happened to a few authors that are on with my publisher and on our site. Okay. Okay. Um, they're selling the arcs. They're selling the arcs. Ah. Yeah, so be, you got to be really careful. Ooh. I have beta readers, but they're people who I know very well. Okay. Yeah, I have two. Not 200. Yeah, I have yeah. two. But um, it's, it's like spreading like wildfire. Well, yeah, because, you know, we were talking about Fifty Shades of Grey, and that's how she actually became known. <laughs> she submitted her book to the beta readers to read, and it took off from there. Everyone wanted to read the book. Well, she was a, uh, she was a, um, oh gosh, I forgot the terminology because it's based off of the Twilight series. Fan fiction. She started as fan fiction mm -hmm. is what yeah. she started. Right. And, exactly. and she yeah, changed yeah. it and then yeah. she got a following and yeah. then her following was really big and that's how she got where she is. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's interesting you're saying this because here again, this is what self-publishing is about. It constantly is changing. And it, I, I always feared that, too. You know, when you write a script, and I know you've written scripts, um, Vicki Ann, you, you're always fearful of sending it to someone because what if they want to steal that idea? Right. You know, and that's what you think about. So, Well, that's why you register it. See, we're, uh, we're registered with jo uh, WGA West. Well, I register my work as well, but they can take that content and, and alter it. 
if the idea is there, then it's easy. There's to a stipulation in WGA West. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's a little different for a script or screenplay than it is for the books. I mean, I might be wrong, but there is a stipulation in there in regards to like material. Right, right, right. But we see movies all the time that are reminiscent of something from the past. And yes, all I've done right. is just altered names, locations. Yes, and, true. You know, and, but true. the storyline's pretty much the same. True. So mm -hmm. I, I get what you're saying. It's interesting you should say that, too, because we've had various people on the show who write both scripts and novels. And when you have a script writer, you always say it's less likely to happen as a script writer. When you have someone who's a, you know, who writes <laughs> novels, they'll always say it's less likely. You never hear that happening from a novel. <laughs> so, you know, it's funny how we have these fears. You know, I guess we, you right. have to throw those to, to the wind yeah. if you're going to try and be successful. That's you can't true. be afraid to put it out there because yeah, otherwise yeah. they'll never get out there. And can I clear so, up one thing? Sure. I don't call myself a script writer. One script, that's it. Um, <laughs> I write, I'm, I'm too Italian. I have to tell the long story. So <laughs> you got to hold well, me back. You had a partner who helped you with, with that writing. So, yeah, 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 I did. Yeah. But yeah. I want to tell you what was told to me that when I started out writing, though, the first thing I ever wrote was a script. And I attended a series of seminars in Emory University in Atlanta. And the, Mrs. Holloway, who was heading the series, asked me what I did. And I said, well, I, I wrote this script. She goes, oh, so you're a writer. And I had it with me. And I said she wanted to see it. And 80 people there, and she's showing it off. And and then I said, well, no, I'm a creator. I'm not a writer. And she goes, I thought you just told me you wrote this script. And she's holding it up. And I said, I did. And she goes, from this point forward, you call yourself a writer. <laughs> right. So, yeah, yeah. you know, you are a script writer. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So we, we, it is important that, you know, when you write a book and you, you, the editing is very important and you need to try and get that clarified as best you can. You know, make sure enough people read it to say, maybe you should have done this or maybe you should have done that or you know, make sure your storyline's flowing well. Those are very right. important things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now decide on your definition of success. It's kind of important because it, we already talked about how 7,000 books a day are published. Wow, that's, that's tremendous. So okay. Incredible. So you got to realize what you're up against if you're going to go out there as a serious author trying to sell your work. So you have to decide, first of all, did I publish this for myself, family, and friends? Or am I serious about getting that out there in the market? And the reason why you have to have a mindset is because if you're just doing it for family and friends, you don't have to concern yourself as much about the various aspects of writing, whether it be the content, the cover, your blurb on the back. None of that matters as yeah. much if it's for family and friends. I have a prime example for okay, you. Okay, all right. Okay, and the reason I'm interrupting you is because I know I'll forget, so I'm sure, sorry. Sure, no problem. But it goes back to, it ties in both of what we were just talking about, editing and having people look at it. Uh -huh. One of the books that um, I have, I was doing the fulfillment series, I was talking about um, a particular um, uh, piece of electronics, and I forgot what which one it was, but I did it by name. And one of my beta readers said, no, don't do that. You're, you're pigeonholing yourself into the era of now, whereas if someone reads it uh, yes. years later, yeah. they're not going to know. So one, it helped to have the editor look at it. Uh -huh. And then two, it's like, okay, I, I'm writing for a group, not just for me and my family, so right. therefore... Right, I and that's it. why you have to have that mindset. You have to decide who are you writing for, Right. who's your audience. So that's very important. And then the next thing is is a great cover design. And that is, it's really, it's important. It's very important. First of all, it's the first thing someone sees when they walk into the store. I mean, if it's on a shelf, they're going to see the spine. But the point is, is if you're going for a book signing, that book's out there, and that's the first thing they're going to see. So you want something that's going to attract the reader to that cover. Right. Because right. Mm -hmm. after they see that front cover, they're going to turn it over and read the back. Correct. So, yeah. And that's all before they even open the book. And that's what happened to the Dust Chronicles. Yeah. So, yes. And actually, you actually brought two books for us today. Both are on display if someone watches the video portion of this show. Um, and to the, well, for the viewer, to the right is the one that you had changed to the one that's on the left, closest to the flowers. Right. And you did that. And what was the reason why you changed that cover? Because the audience that the one on the right, the original cover was attracting, was too young. Okay. Yeah, because the kids would look at that and they would think it was for them. And that's a young adult book. Uh -huh. So they would go for it and it would be not appropriate for that age group. 
Uh huh. So then the publisher, you know, we we talked about it, um, the chief editor and I, and came to the conclusion that the cover needed to be changed. Okay. And that's why we went for the other cover. And and one of the things that we talk about here is you shouldn't be afraid to change the cover. Right. Um, and that's what I'm going to have to do on my next book is is change the cover because I've lost my gentleman that made my original book cover. Yeah, but, but I like that book cover though. Oh, I I do too. Uh, one book stands out in my mind uh, that you changed the cover on, and that's Angels Never Die. Uh, the original cover was okay, but when you changed it the, the way it, it now looks, it was phenomenal. I mean, you could just see the angel, and uh, it's yeah. just incredible. It, and it, it actually, I think what, what we did with that cover was is that... I actually designed that cover. And what, what I did is, and it's not my book, but what I did is, is I went out there and I thought about the cover. And it's about a story. It's about a woman who lost four boys. And on the front cover, she had her four boys. And it was fine. It was the pictures yeah. and her. But when you're telling a story for family and friends, that's fine. But when you're telling a story for an audience, a worldwide audience, they're not going to know who those people are. Right. And it might not convey to them exactly what it's about. So what I ended up doing was actually going out there and photographing a real, you know, statue of an angel. We did illuminations. We, yeah. I mean, it really, it, you know, you really have to think about what the content of that book is and what that story is about. And that's what you have to convey on the front cover as much as you yeah. possibly can. And, and it and was that's her, not always easy. No. And it was her faith in God mm -hmm. that held her family together, held her together. Right. And when you look at this cover... You feel all of those things. You you know immediately. It leads uh, you where you need to right. go. Yeah. You've got yeah. the stained glass window, the yeah. angel, the four rays of sunlight shining her, through the clouds. Yeah, four yeah. boys. Yeah. 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 So, oh. you know, the cover is very important. First of all, it, it's what's going to attract the reader to the book. Yeah. Right. Secondly, yeah. it's what it says on the back. That blurb on the back is mm -hmm. so important. Mm -hmm. um, and then that will get them to open it up and possibly either read the first chapter or skim through it. And so that cover can be everything for a book. And I have problems with it, too. But I'm going to tell you a little technique I use when, I, when I'm designing covers, whether it's for my book or someone else's. Um, I will sit down, and I'll do my little graphic artwork, and then I'll print them out, and I'll have different styles, sometimes just color changes. And then I'll, I'll go into a restaurant, because sometimes I'll go into a restaurant to, to sit and write. But if I go into a restaurant and I have the covers with me, the, like five or six different designs, I'll just know. ask whoever comes up, total stranger, like a server or, you know, someone just walking by sometimes, and I'll say, okay, I need your opinion on something. I don't know you, but I'd like to know what do you think about these covers? Which one would you pick if you had to choose a cover? And that works because you're getting an unbiased opinion from someone you don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And they're just going to point to the one they like the best. That's yeah. actually a really good idea. Mm. So, I mean, I, I ask other people, but they're related to me. Right. So I always yeah. get unbiased That's a good opinions. idea. Yeah. 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 All right. So we're talking about the covers there and then your sales description. And we just hit on that <sighs> in that it's hard to write a book, but sometimes it's harder to distill that book in a couple of paragraphs. Now, as a, someone who's written scripts, when you're doing a tagline to attract someone to that script, you actually have to tell what that entire story is about in one to two sentences. Yes. So you oh. have when you're writing a novel – in particular, if you're writing a novel, um, when you come to the back cover, if you can kind of keep that in mind, obviously you're going to want a paragraph or two. If you can, if you can tell that whole story in one or two paragraphs, that's what you need to try and accomplish. Yes. And it sounds impossible, but like I said, when you're a script writer, you've got to tell it in one to yeah. two sentences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So if you keep that in mind, it's very important. Be concise to the point and what the story yeah. is about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but because especially when I pick up a book and I look at the and it tells too much, it kind of makes me put the book back. It's like, well, now I already know what's about. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> right. You've already read it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you want to entice yeah, them. The you want to entice when, them. When I watch it, a trailer for a movie and they're showing all the scenes and it's like, okay, seeing all the movie, don't need to go pay for it. Yeah, and it's getting to be more and more. The, yeah. the, 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 the funnier parts are all in, in the trailers. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. I think that a back of a book should just be real basic, like who's in it, um, 
what may be going to happen or, you know, just kind of bits and pieces, but like still leave the mystery. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that's the thing. Have, leave yeah, some yeah, intrigue. Tell too much. You need the uh, hook. A lot of people yeah. are just going to reshelf it and say, okay, I already know what it's about. Yeah. And I'll, and it's probably going to end that way. Okay. Bye. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And the hook. Yeah. You need the hook. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So when say, uh, you've written 13 books now, so when you write your books, uh, Vicki Ann, do you create, the yes. blurb? You do. I okay. do. I okay. do. All right. Okay. Yeah. But and and yeah, I, I did what you and said. I did. Actually. And I, and I, I, last night I went and I looked up her book. Uh huh. And the room's two, 629. 629. Yeah. Yes. And I really liked the blurb and I was like, okay, doesn't tell too much. Boom, bought it. Oh, really? You did? That's so nice. Well, I hope you enjoy it. You know, the cover is, is um, a semi finalist in the cover contest. Um, Right now. Wow. Uh -huh. So and I hope I, you enjoy it. Especially online, I really don't look at the cover. I always look at what it's about. And then I just say, oh, okay. It, it catches me. doesn't tell me too much. What, you know, it's, I'm still going to have to figure it out with the characters. And then I'll buy it. All right. That's well, cool. So, so that, see, it works. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. All right, so think about your own behavior as a reader. Um, and exactly what you just said, it, Sandy, or Sandra, mm -hmm. it's exactly what you just said. All right, yeah. so now you have to decide on your categories and keywords um, for like the title, the subtitle, a series title. Um, that's kind of, a, well, it is important. You yes. know? Yeah. You know, the yeah. title is everything. Mm -hmm. I, I, oh. Good example, um, and this is regarding myself. I had a book that came out in 2005. The title of the book um, mentioned God, and even though it really wasn't blasphemy, a lot of people took that book as being... A, Blasphemous? You know, yeah. Oh, oh, so yeah. I changed the title. I revised the title. It's a new title, and the book's getting ready to come out. And um, it is science fiction, so I don't know how they tied that in with being blasphemy. But anyway, the thing is, is that, you know, titles are everything. Yeah. I thought it was a great title. But then mm -hmm. I, I, I literally, I used to work in one of the major hotels in Las Vegas. And I remember I took the book in when it first came off you know, the press and set it down for people to look at. And as I walked away, I heard someone saying, oh, I'm not going to read this. This is blasphemy. I heard my own words. I heard someone, wow. or in my own ears, I heard someone talking wow. about that book. So, yeah, so then, yeah. you know, I'm thinking, okay, it's time to change that title. Well, I think about the afternoon <laughs> that we sat down, and it, it seemed like it took us three hours to come up with the name for my book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though I had it set in my brain right from yeah. the day one, yeah. and that wasn't it. Well, we went over several different yeah, choices. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, but I do mm -hmm. like the title of your book. So. I do what too. comes yeah. first, your title or your context? Well, the with context. me, my title my came title. first. Oh, really? <laughs> my title always yeah. comes first. Really? Always. Wow. Every single book. No, not book. me. I write the book, and then, then the, um, I, I try to create. The title book. pops in my head, and then the book yeah. comes. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Exactly. Mine, too. Well, see, some of my stories are based on dreams, so I have to write down the dream, so I don't have a title. Maybe the title yeah. was in your dream, and you missed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. Uh, but, maybe. you know, that's interesting, though. I, you're yeah. the first author I've ever heard say that. Really? Wow. Yeah. And they've now, actually yeah. created yeah. their story from. Yeah. yeah. So that's interesting. Yes. So both of you on the show today uh -huh. are the first two I've ever wow. heard say that. Well, it just be like, oh. you know, the things around you, you're looking at something and it's like, like the queen of it. Okay. Yeah. My daughter and I were in the front seat of the car and she's like, you're it. And I went, no, you're it. And this because she was younger at the time. Yeah. So this went back and forth for a little bit. And then I said to her, I'm the queen of it. Uh, and then, uh, 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 the book came uh, after. Real good. Wow, that's really yeah. interesting. All right. Huh. In 2016, a report from Bowker shows continuing growth in self publishing. More than 725,000 self published works were registered in 2015. Now, we read the statistics. Now, those are published books, those aren't ebooks. So, the market when it comes to published books is basically the same as ebooks, it's constantly growing. Mm -hmm. And it's really changing the whole way we look at traditional publishers. Um, as a matter of fact, we had a guest on the show who talked about how even agents are different today than what they were just a few years ago because they're not looking at you anymore as a client that they can go out and push your book to the major publishers. They're looking at mm -hmm. your, your book as something that the, the traditional publisher thinks has a chance 
not just as published books, but ebooks as well. So they're a go between now in, in a different way than they were a few years ago. Like they'll go and represent you, and I've got this great client, and they'll sell you on it. Now they have to sell to the traditional publisher on, on that book itself, mm -hmm. not yeah. you. Right. Book, yeah. You know? Right. Uh huh. You know? Right. So, and it, we also talked about how it used to be like, uh, if you had a, a, a publisher, usually they, they would pigeonhole you, and they would have you, if you, if you write young adult, then mm -hmm. they would want you to write all young adult. Mm -hmm. If you write science fiction, they wanted you to write all science fiction. Mm -hmm. But Mwah. nowadays, authors are going out there, and they're all over the place. Um, you know, they are, but uh, still, it seems, the in the industry right now, it still seems to be, though, that if uh, a author, an agent is interested in you for your paranormal love story right? Uh -huh, right and he signed you for the paranormal or she signed you for the paranormal love story uh -huh. your next three or four books better be a paranormal love story after that you can pretty much do what you want but they expect right because the that's ones the genre following you right in yes uh -huh. and, and that's exactly what we talked about on the last show is that you know maybe they need to be changing their way of thinking yeah because w right. we had john david mann on and he's written like I don't know, 26 books. Right. And they're all different. I mean, yeah. you know, he's, but when you have one agent who represents this, he said that too, that, that they expect you to follow this genre or whatever. And that's why he self published his last book, by the way. Mm, okay. Oh, right. Okay. Because of because that. Because it was different. Yep. Yeah. And so yeah. if he yeah. wanted it out there, he had to put it out there himself. I find though that if you're, if you're contracted with a publisher, you know, without the agent, you yeah. have more freedom to be able to change genre. Like I, when I got solstice, I got solstice with a, um, historical romance. Okay. And then went into paranormal. Ah. even though uh -huh. the dust chronicles was before them at, you know, at the other publisher, which was a paranormal romance in between, I wrote the historical romance. They contracted me with that. And then I submitted my other work afterwards when I was doing it and then was able to get that published. Wow. So I think you have a little more freedom if you're with like a medium-sized publisher without the middleman of the agent. Okay. Oh, that could be. Yeah. All right. So booksellers and libraries are seeking opportunities to incorporate their thriving source of content into their offerings. So um, when it comes to booksellers and libraries, there is where the industry is changing a lot too. We've also discussed this several times on the show in that we, we saw borders go to the wayside which mm -hmm. was a huge corporation, yes. Walden right. Books, Borders. And then you have Barnes & Nobles, and Barnes & Nobles is having to change a little bit to keep up as well. Right. You right. see more and more people going to, to you know, what is it, Nook is their ebook mm -hmm. division. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, they realize now we have to maintain that ebook division if we're going to compete because, you know, Amazon is like the king of uh, Well, now you <laughs> e have Amazon stores too. Yes, I know. Yeah, and now that they bought out this one grocery store chain, mm -hmm. it sounds like they're going to be putting little coffee mm -hmm. shops or whatever in those yep. as well. Yep. So mm -hmm. it's an ever-changing industry. But one of the things I noticed that's different, um, what was there was a movie out that was about this. It was a chain store that went under and one of the big With chains. Meg Ryan? Yeah, with Meg Ryan. Yeah. Okay, and that was true. Oh, with Tom Hanks and yeah. Meg Ryan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know... <laughs> Without, well, that wasn't Sleepless in Seattle, was it? No, 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 no. No, no, no. Uh, no, it had something to do with the internet, the title. Oh, yeah. You, uh, you've, you've got mail. I you've, got mail. Got you've got mail. mail. You've got mail. I love mail. that movie. Yeah. I love yeah. it. And I love that little bookstore. And that was yeah. true at the time. That's exactly what was happening at that time, that the mom and pop stores were going to the wayside because the bigger stores were pushing them out of business. They couldn't compete. But you're starting to see a whole new shift in things again. And you're mm -hmm. seeing more and more mom and pop stores come back into the swing of things. You're yes. right. And Vicki Ann, I know for sure you've done signings at some of the local mom yes. and pop stores. Yes. So you see that swing as well. Yes, and I love it. And more, uh, we're getting more. There's a couple more popping up around town lately. Well, and what's interesting about that is, is that we talked about this on the last show as well, is that with... The mom and pop stores, they want the independent authors to come in and do book signings. Yes. Yep. But when you come to the bigger stores, the chains, it's very difficult as a self-published author to go into a store and do a signing. Yeah. 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 So, mm -hmm. in fact, for most authors, it's not even going to happen. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a difficult criteria. Yeah. You know, you jump through hoops of fire, then you do somersaults into a pool, and then, you know, you balance, uh, walk 
across a moat, and then you're lucky at the end. <laughs> then maybe you can get, you can get <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. just to find out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's just to see if they'll talk to you. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but one of the things I tell authors who are self-published, if you're thinking about getting your book in a store, if you want to get it in a chain store, and I don't mean on the shelf all the time. I'm talking about just to go in and do a signing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then maybe they'll yeah. keep it afterwards. Right. There yeah. is a little bit of criteria you have to do. And one is the cover. That cover has to be attractive. Correct. Second is the blurb on the back. Correct. That, that blurb has to attract people. Content isn't as, as important as those two things. However, they are going to look at the content to make sure everything's like typesetting. You know, they'll read a little bit to see if, 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 if the editing's good. And that, that's one of the things that I learned after I wrote my book, and you went through it, and that is the typeset. Mm-hmm. The typeset is extremely important to right. the reader. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the other thing is, is that you have to have all the criteria on the back. It has to be set up to where you have a distributor. Because nowadays, the big stores won't take you, except on a consignment basis. But as far as trying to take your book into the store, because keep in mind, there are, ev- there are people out there who have published books that have done quite well mm-hmm. as independent you know, published books, right. but it's because they had the barcode on the back. Right. They made yeah. sure, yeah, and they made sure that everything was registered the way it was supposed to be, right. and they went through Ingram or someone like Ingram. Right. Um, because uh-huh. they're a distributor. If you go through Amazon, that's not a distributor. That's right. not the same thing as the type of distributors that the big stores are looking for. What the big stores are looking for, they're looking for a bigger markup. They want a 55% markup. Now, you can go to Ingram, and you can self-publish through Ingram, and if you self-publish, you can choose to do 40% or 55%, but if you choose that 40% markup as opposed to 55 you will not get your book in the store. Right. Yes, you're making less money, less royalty on your book, but now you have it in the bigger store. You have more right. exposure. Yeah, <laughs> and, and kind of, you have to decide, what do I want? Do I mm-hmm. want the exposure, exposure, or am I just going to go out there and put it in independent stores and sell this wherever I can on my own? So you have to make this decision. If you yeah. do it the way I'm suggesting, you can do both. Yes. Yeah. So that's what you need to be doing. Okay. Sounds like you have a cold, Sandra. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As I was drinking some tea, but it's not helping. <laughs> well, we're almost done. But anyway, the good thing is, is that uh, you can get your book. If you do it right, you can get your book into Barnes & Nobles. Yes. Now. Huh. So yeah. keep in mind, though, that when you have a store that's going to take your book, even if you do a, a signing, let's say in a local store, at a local Barnes & Nobles, that book's uh-huh. only going to be there for three months. So you still have to be out there promoting it, promoting it, promoting it. Mm-hmm. Right. And, yeah. you, and I always tell people, if they say, oh, I'm interested in your book, I'd say, go to Barnes & Nobles and buy the book. Right. <laughs> because you want to show sales there. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know yeah. because, um, you know, as you know, we've done, I've done several signings yes. at Barnes & Noble. And, you know, if your book's not selling... Why would they want you to come right. back? Right. <laughs> and another thing to keep in mind, too, is if you do events, if you do big events, like, uh-huh. Jen, you did one at a dealership where you work. But the yes. thing is, the point is, is this. Next time, what I would suggest to you is go to their coordinator, the events coordinator at the one of the local stores, the Barnes & Nobles, and ask them to participate because they can come there and they can actually sell the book through them. You yeah. won't make as much money, right. but mm-hmm. you're still getting credit for the sales of that book. I hadn't thought about it, yeah, but that's a they darn do, good idea. They do off-store sales. Yeah. And there you can do consignments because now you're c- creating an event and they're coming to the event and representing you right. at that event. That's a well, good idea. Yeah. Wish I had known that then because every one of my <laughs> authors also has been in Barnes and Nobles sure. and is in Barnes and Nobles. That would have been great for all of us. Yeah. So next time, that's what you need to think yeah. about doing. Yeah. So. You know, there's more and more places around town though that are are getting friendlier with doing signings and things. We just did a um, Walmart. Oh yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. Yeah, Costco yeah. does it as well. Yeah. Yeah, we did yeah. Walmart. Yeah. Yeah, me yeah. and uh, and Linda. Linda Fox, we did it, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they're on hiatus now through the holidays, obviously, because they're so busy, but um, we're going to be booking another one in January. Very good. So, I mean, they're getting more friendly, and they're opening up, and they're realizing that, you know, people want the the arts, and they want those things here, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the thing we talked about on one of the shows, is that how... Sometimes I think the big stores make a mistake by turning away self-published authors. 
Yeah. Because... Yes. And Linda is self-published, so... Oh, great. Yeah, okay. so see, yeah. that's working for her. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and she went through that process, you know, getting it edited correctly and yeah. the cover, and it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's what we're talking about here is in the shift in the industry. So when the reality of self-publishing is you have to make that book like it's something that a traditional publisher put out. Exactly. And you can. The tools are there today. You know what? Even if you wanted to go through Amazons or Create Spaces or Smashwords or whatever, they actually have places you can pay for someone to help with that cover. Oh, yeah. Uh, they actually have yeah. people that you can go through for resources mm -hmm. when it comes to marketing even. Yes. Um, we're going to be doing a show in the future on, on PR. A lot of people, most self-published authors don't have a PR person. Mm -hmm. And the real reason for that is it can be kind of expensive. Mm -hmm. However, if you have a book that has the potential of doing qu quite well, you might want to think about that. You know, like, is it time? You'll know when it's time, but, you know, is it time that I get a PR firm behind me to go out there and push this book yeah. in the and different markets? And if you got markets? two books already done and a third one in the making, mm -hmm. then that would be also a good reason to get a PR person because then you you strike on all three. Right. Yeah, yeah we've yeah. All, we talked about that too, Vicki Ann, with Jen before we went on the air, about how yeah. sometimes it takes that second or third book to go out there and generate an audience to go back and sell the first and second book. Exactly. So yep. you never give up on what you've written. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah. No, it's true. Yeah. yeah. It's true. And that PR have, question is burning in yeah, my brain every Amazon day. Amazon does have that marketing service. Yeah, they sure do. Uh -huh. And, you know, that's the, the thing we, we have to, to think about as self-publishers is, is what can I do that's going to make my book stand out and look just as good as a traditional published book? Correct. And you always have to think about that when you're out there publishing. In other words, yeah. don't just put anything out there. Make sure you got right. something good. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, because it does make a big difference. I mean, you know how people, like you said, you know, you go to Amazon and now you can read the first chapter or the first few pages or, you know, right. and if you're going to look in there and you're going to see it and it's, and it's not done correctly, they're not going to buy it. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. you know? right. And the great thing about publishing today, and you did this as well, and I do it all the time. When you publish a book, I mean, I've literally gone back the second day and, and made changes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Immediately when someone calls and says, oh, you have two V's there. Oh, my goodness. I got to take that first V oh, out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In a sentence, oh, so. then you, you can go back to your, your create space or wherever and uh -huh. submit a new manuscript. Oh, see, I can't yep. do that. Well, you can't because you're published. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> hopefully your publishers I do it all the I don't, time. They do do that. Yeah. They do do that. Because that's the other thing that's different now with traditional publishers, too, is they also have the where for all to do yeah. the same thing. Yeah, they do. They do. But, I mean, it goes through so many different levels before it gets there. So you cross your fingers and hope it's all correct, you yeah. know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and what were you saying, Sandra? No, I said I've done it several times because it's, oh, people say my book was too long. Um, and so I, I go back and I edit down some more. And so and then I resubmit it to Create Space and Amazon for Kindle. And then reread it again and see if I find any other mistakes or anybody else does. Yeah. Then uh -huh. I do it again. You know, I've done it several times. Yeah. You know what I hear, Sandra, a lot from, uh, from my editors? These are the words. Tighten it up. Take out the useless words. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. like I said, I'm very long-winded. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've read some articles, too, that, you know, I'll go back and I'll be reading these articles and then it say that you shouldn't have done this and you shouldn't have done this. And then so then I go back to my manuscript yeah. and yeah. see if I did that. But, you know, that's the wonderful thing about publishing it. today is we can do that. Yeah. We can yeah. go uh -huh. back and reinvent um what the book that I told you the title, you know, it was called Creating God. And so I guess from perspective of someone. I love that title. I yeah. love the title uh -huh. too, but when it comes to science fiction, people thought, you know, who's creating God? Yeah. So, you know. I uh, wouldn't even go there. Uh, they, well, I did not even go there. Yeah, and that's good. That's yeah. the reader I want. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, but, you know, now it's the alien transcripts. So that will be the book that's coming out. I like that too, but yeah. I really love the first one. Well, it's actually called The Trailing 
the alien transcripts creating God. Okay. So yes. anyway, uh, there is like a that. subtitle. There. I like that. Yeah. But at least it backs away from what people thought was blasphemy. Yeah. And so that book will be coming out here shortly. But anyway, um, I, the great thing is I can do that. I don't have to rely, rely on someone else. Or I don't have a publisher who say, we tried that once. It didn't work. Mm-hmm, now right, I yeah. can go back and I can resubmit this and put it back out there. And the great thing is, is because it's been a few years, I can reinvent it a little bit. I can mm-hmm. add to the story to make it more plausible than what it was even then. I've had more time to think about it. Yeah. So that's the great thing about this industry today is that it really is in the hands of the author if they want it that way. Right. Yeah. And I don't, yeah. I, you know, I'm not opposed to traditional publishers at all. I think it's fantastic because they do have the tools to market your book. Right. Right, and that yeah. is that's mm-hmm. true. You know, they do do a, right. a certain yeah. amount of marketing. But then you don't have all those copies of, of books lying around that have all those mistakes, and you're like, dang it. <laughs> well, the other good thing about self-publishing today is you don't have to do that. Now, when I started out, you had to order like 2,000 to 5,000 uh-huh. copies of your book. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. You had oh, to do wow. a mass. If you wanted a decent price, if you, if you wanted uh-huh. to get it at a, if you wanted to lower the price to where you could print it at a reasonable price where you could sell it, you had right. to or, order it in large quantities. Okay. Yeah. okay. I mean, you could order 200 books, but, it, you know, you're paying as much as would sell for retail. Oh, wow. So, okay. uh, literally, I had to do that with my first book. I had to order like 5,000. <gasps> so, anyway, the thing is, oh, is that goodness. now oh, you've oh. got a garage full of books. You've got to try and get out there in the stores yeah. and sell. Yeah. Right. Well, today it's much easier. Today, mm-hmm, yeah. it's easier because you, you don't have to actually have a book in, physical book in your hand to send to someone. You can actually go online, no. right. order the book, and have it send to their address, and you never see that book. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's, that's the glory and the great thing about self-publishing today. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So if you've got all your ducks in a row, you've got a great cover, you've got a great story, you've got good yeah. you know, cover design, uh-huh. um, it's, easy, yeah. it's easier now to try and get that book out there. Yeah. Then. Yeah, yeah, and as long yeah. as you've got a distributor, I, just, I I go on Create Space and and I can order the book. What I sell on Amazon for like ten dollars, I could order it for like four dollars, right. and then to, yeah, order like ten or twenty whatever, and go down to the local um, mall and just sit outside on the on the back of my truck and sell it. <laughs> Absolutely, so, good for you, Sandra. I had a question for you. How did you come up with the pricing for your book? Like you were just saying, it, it cost you four. Where did you come up with the ten? Did you just do a comparison of other books that were on Amazon? Yeah, no. It, yeah. Um, on Create Space, um, it shows you how much that for how many yeah. words uh, in your right. book. Yeah. And it shows you how much that it should sell for. Well, right. you can't go. Oh, and that's lower handy. Than yeah. A certain price. Yeah. If you put the price in of your book, it'll yeah. actually tell you immediately what your royalty will be. Yeah. They'll tell ah. you exactly yeah. how much. It, yeah. yeah. Printing costs. For how everything. many words yeah. are in your book? How much that you could sell it for? Say eleven dollars, or you can go a little higher. Yeah. Then eleven dollars. See, I always if wondered you that. Make yeah. More money. It, yeah. Yeah. It automatically calculates. That's it for cool. You. And actually, all the sites mm-hmm. pretty much do that. Now the difference is is between the two, like we were talking about Ingram and let's just use Create Space and Ingram. With Create Space, you're going to make let's say for instance you'd make four dollars royalty on your book if you sold it, mm-hmm. you know, on Amazon mm-hmm. through Create Space. Yeah. But if you go to Ingram because it's being distributed. Mm-hmm. And it goes to mm-hmm. to a store through a distribution, and you chose the fifty five percent markup. Obviously, you're not going to make as much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you have to decide what do I want to do? Do I want to get the book in the store? or Am I going to just go out there and sell it on my own? Yeah. If you've got yeah. a, if you've got a, a, a platform and you can go out there and sell a hundred thousand books on your own, then fantastic. But if you really need to get exposure and get it into the bigger chains, then mm-hmm. you have to be willing to bite the bullet and say, I'm going to take as opposed to four dollars, I'm going to take a dollar seventy two royalty per book. Mm-hmm. But I want to tell you something. In this day and uh-huh. age, and people don't think this way because it's a new era in publishing, they're thinking, oh, God, you know, I'm only going to make a dollar or a dollar seventy-two per book. Yeah. When I started out, you didn't make money on your book until you got to the second or third edition. Yes, yes, I know. Yeah. So when my mindset back then was, maybe that's why I think differently today, my mindset back then was, oh, gosh, i got to really push this book in order to start making a profit. Today you can make a profit from the first day right, without yeah. ever printing the book, just from ebooks. You right, can make a right. So that's why I think sometimes you have to 
throw aside the thought process when it comes to getting a distributor and say, I want this distributor, so it's worth it to only get a dollar or a dollar seventy two profit per book mm -hmm. because I'm getting my book in the store and I'm getting exposure. Exactly. Um, and I think people, more authors need to think that way because nowadays everyone wants to make a million dollars right away. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they're not mm -hmm. thinking long term. Right. Like plant your seed and let it grow. Right. You know, and that's where you make your money. My dad used to say, throw enough things against the wall and eventually something will stick. Right. Well, it's the same principle. Right. The right, more right. you get, the more you do it with a distributor where it's, you know, it's going to see more eyes. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're running out of time. So, Vicki, where can we learn more about your book? Uh, Amazon.com, uh, my web, VickiAnnBush.com, and Barnes & Noble. All right. And, Jan, I'm going to let you read one more time where we can find Sandra's book. Okay. It's at SierraSandraMe.Wixsite.com forward slash website. And that's S-I-E-R-R-A-S-A-N-D-R-A-M-E period. W I X S I T E period dot com forward slash website. And that'll also be on our uh, aspects of writing. Yeah, you can go there and just click on the author's picture or their yeah. book and you can take it to But it's also, yeah, it's also available on Amazon. Right. Under S M Sierra. S M Sierra. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. that's the title of the book Molly is Blue and Molly the Quill Blue of Two. and the Quill of Two Lives. And Molly Blue. And the, yeah. And the 13 yeah. Wands. Yeah. Yes. All right. So I'd like to thank our guests, Sandra Sierra and Vicki Ann Bush, along with my co-host, Janet Corsi. And you can always find copies of this show on video, the video portion, on YouTube.com. Just go to YouTube.com forward slash user forward slash aspects of writing. I think you can just go to forward slash aspects of writing and it'll bring it up as well. Or you can go to our website, which is the easiest thing for everyone to do. I always tell people just go to the aspectsofwriting.com website. Right. If you go to the middle of the page, to the right, there's a little column there, and it has in there the terrestrial stations where you can listen to the show. It also has links to all of our sites like iHeartRadio, iTunes, Roku TV. Just click on that little yep. icon, and it'll take you right to the site. Uh, so let's see. Until next week, this is your host, James Kelly, reminding <laughs> you, <laughs> if you can dream it, you can write it. Thank you, everyone, for being on the show. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. Thank you.